ready for the word of the Lord? I want you to get out your Bibles, your pens, your notebooks, and I'm going to have you seated because I want to take you line upon line, precept upon precept. I have sincerely sought the Lord and believe that without a shadow of a doubt, I have my hand to the pulse of God, a word for you, a word this morning. Uh, everything is changing in your life, and it's changing for God's good. And your destiny is being determined and developed as you have discerned uh, the purpose and plan of God for your life. Bishop and I have been teaching on accelerated destiny, quick, fast. Those things that have been delayed in your life have not been denied, but there is an acceleration. As it is in heaven, so will it be in 07. I speak over you, I speak to you, that before that clock strikes midnight, December 31st, that everything that God has spoken, you shall see a forced compliance, a completion, a perfection of what God has declared in your life. Uh, with that predetermination, he began to speak to me. Uh, Bishop preached last week on perseverance, that you have to have a fortitude to stand. Uh, when things are grievously vexed and when they look bad, you have to have a fortitude uh, to be able to endure. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Uh, pressure will produce the power of God in your life. And what the enemy sends to work against you, God will use for you. Look at somebody say, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So the word of the Lord to you is there is a predetermination. Are you with me today? Predetermination. Your boundaries have been marked out. We studied that John chapter 2. And there's an acceleration, meaning what has taken years is about to be done in moments. But for that to be accomplished, now here's where I'm going to talk to those that have an ear to hear with the Spirit, okay? If you came to look cute today, just just hang on for the ride and come back and look cute next week, okay? But if you came because you're a world changer and you're a history maker and you are not here to exist, come on, you are here to fulfill the plan and purpose of God and you know there is destiny. You know you've been chosen by God. You know you should have been dead by now. You know you should have lost your mind. You, you know you were in a horrible pit and he lifted you up and set your feet on a solid rock. You know that you didn't find God. God found you and marked you and determined you. And he was the one that, that designed, we found out not only you, but also designed your days. And every day was numbered in the book before it was, it was all written out before you ever lived one of those. And you know that. Then you are going to understand that before, watch and hear very carefully. If we have been saying the prophetic word of the Lord, as it is in heaven, so will it be in 07. There's an acceleration. Are you with me? Then you're about to understand why you have gone through some of the chaos, change, and turbulence you've gone through. Here it is. Write this statement down. God gave me this statement. Every destiny, which is the predetermination, it's a succession of events, the inevitable plan of God. Every destiny is accompanied is accompanied by a myriad of difficulties whoo i've got a word today for everyone who needs a text we'll go to psalm chapter 34 verse 19 psalm 34 verse 19 the word of the lord says this many are the afflictions of the righteous those that are in right standing that are in clear self many are the troubles of those that are in clear self right standing but the lord delivers him out of them all so many means abundance in quantity and size now see that's enough for me to shut the book and jump up and down because there's nothing i will ever walk through that is not passed through the sovereign hands of an almighty god and everything in my life is either God used or God sent. So if it's not sent by God, it's used by God. That means there's no way to defeat you. If you are walking with God, it is a fixed fight. Come on, there is no way, no weapon formed against you will ever be able to prosper, to advance. And so many, abundance in size and quantity, it's from the root that means to cast together or to multiply by a myriad. In other words, trouble, have you ever heard the saying that, you know, trouble comes in, what is it, like 
threes and trouble comes in this, it comes like with this, just in this uh, provision, not one thing at a time that you deal with it, but it is multiplied by a myriad. So here's what the principle that you begin to understand, because I'm going to teach you today. I'm going to get you there. Somebody say, bring it on, bring it on. Destiny is often delivered through the doorway of difficulties. So when we begin to talk destiny, you cannot separate this principle called difficulty. So in, or, uh, in other words, to walk in cutting edge vision, if I am going to be the world changer and the history maker that God has called me to be, it requires an understanding of the dynamics that govern and promote change. You are going from glory to glory to glory. The word of the Lord to you is this, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. The House, the, come on, the latter house shall be greater than the former house. That what God has said over you shall be established over you. Do not despise small beginnings because every oak tree starts out as an acorn. When you're in the trailer, don't let somebody judge you because you can't afford to even pay attention. You are the head and not the tail. It is a temporary season, not a permanent condition of your life. And so we begin to understand the patterns and the principles of God. Years ago, scientists did a study, quantum physics, called chaology. And scientists discovered that what looks like chaos on the surface actually has a pattern that is moving towards an intended end. But I didn't need a scientist or I didn't need research to tell me what Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, had already shown me in the Word of God as far as patterns that have been predetermined. God began to show me that in the beginning, which means the dateless past, before there was ever anything ever called time, that before there was ever an earth established or a sun or moon that was hung or stars that sit in their socket, before anything began to happen, a bird chirped or man was formed out of the dust, in the dateless past, in the very beginning, out of eternity, the earth was void. It was in an undistinguishable ruin. It was an empty wasteland. And the Spirit of God was brooding, hovering. See, you can never move in your destiny without God hovering over you, without God's presence covering you and walking with you. You cannot be separated from the connection of the Spirit of God breathing life into you. I've got a word for somebody. The, the Spirit was hovering over an empty wasteland, an undistinguishable ruin, and, and it began to move. See, many people want to see manifestation in their life and they try to do so by simply speaking and while speaking is important confession is not the sole thing that brings manifestation you have to have movement before you have speaking and the problem is most people speak and then they move and then they want to see but that's disorder because God moved in nothing and then didn't begin to speak to nothing and saw something you move out of revelation because there's an internal picture on the inside of you that shows you something that the natural eye cannot see come on that's why people think you're crazy because you who do not have hope begin to call those things that are not as though they were talk to me Abraham Sarah's barren. You're old. There's no Viagra, but you're still the father of many nations. So what happens is the Spirit of God begins to move. And so you don't see manifestation by confession. You see it by moving out of revelation. Movement comes from revelation that then begins to create confession where you speak, that then begins to have manifestation and realization in your life. So, so what happens here is Genesis 1 and 2 shows us the order, the pattern of God, that God moves in chaos to establish cosmos. So we all want order. We all want structure. But God looks for chaos. This is a pattern. Come on, it's out of the crevices, the darkness of the destiny begins to rise. It is in chaos that God begins to bring forth cosmos. It's transition time. And transition means leaving one place to embrace another. And transition is not easily embraced with the created tension that is required to activate 
supernatural faith because remember, faith has to have created tension in order for it to function and to flourish and to operate. And so that transition is not easily embraced with the created tension that goes along with it unless, somebody say unless, you understand that there is a removing of created things that at one time served a purpose, but now must undergo chaos. Help me out. In other words, you have an understanding. In order for me to get to Cosmo, there has to be chaos. And so there is a removing of created things that at one time served a purpose. There are people that had to leave your life for you to go into this kind of commotion. You're going to find out why. There are doors that had to be shut. That boss had to fire you. I know that's hard to hear because you're still crying. Why'd they do that? You had to be relocated. Come on, things that you thought, man, that, that doesn't make sense. It felt chaotic. All of that had to happen because you are a world changer and you are a history maker. And Gideon, you're a great man of valor, even though you're sitting in a wine press with your knees shaking like a coward. David, you are a mighty man of God who is anointed to rule as prophet, priest, and king. Although they see you as a little boy in a field, just calling you a shepherd boy, mocking you. What are you doing down here with those few sheep? Where'd you leave those? What are you doing down here? They don't understand you. They don't approve of you. Your daddy doesn't even consider you a contestant in the lineup. But I see you as a man, a man, not a boy, a man after my own heart. Because I see your destined state, not your present condition. Talk to me, somebody. And so in order to get to the predetermination, the boundaries that have been marked out by God for your life, there has to be a restructuring and an enlargement to hold the dream of your future and the destiny, the predetermination from the sovereign plan that God has for you, which always, somebody say always is larger than the accomplishments of your past. One thing I can guarantee, your future is bigger and brighter than anything of your past. It's always because God's order is he takes you from glory to glory to glory to glory. Now, the problem is Isaiah 46 says he shows you the end from the beginning. Down here in the beginning, he shows you the end. But you think you're going to go like this. You think you're going to go from here to here to here to here and grow in stature. But that's not how God does. That's why he doesn't show you the mess in the middle. Because it would mess you up so so bad mentally, but I'm going to help you understand why you've been going through the chaos you've been going through. Because before the clock strikes midnight, as it is in heaven, so will it be in 07. You see, here's what happens in the beginning, in the embryonic stage, then there's a chaos and a commotion. It's the hallway of nowhere to get you to your significance somewhere because it's a mess in the middle, the hallway of transition transition, a metathesis that transforms you into who God has determined you to be. And God's way are not man's way. Come on, I've got a word for somebody. In fact, God's ways are so opposite. If you want to go up in God, you got to get down in God. Come on. If you want to be, if you want to be used mightily, then you have to be base. Come on. It's the weak things that causes strength in your life. You have to walk with a limp if you're going to prevail with God and with man. Talk to me, Jacob. You'll never get to be in Israel until you learn. Come on. I've got a word for somebody. God's ways are not man's ways. So what happens is there's a restructuring to accomplish the dream and the destiny. Uh, I'll give you an example real quick. Elijah and Elisha. Uh, Elijah says, I want a double portion of what I've seen God do through you, of your spirit. Say, I want twice of that. And you know the ultimate result. The end of it's going to be that. He's going to perform 32 miracles where his mentor, Elijah, performed 16 miracles.